Hey, beautiful gems, and welcome back to another segment here on Gems Podcast. It's your girl, Genesis Amaris Kemp, and with me today in the hot seat is Kevin Aregbe, and I'm going to tell you a little bit more about him before we dive in. So he also goes by Kevo, is from H-Town Clutch City, which is Houston, Texas, for those of you who aren't aware, and he holds an MFA degree. His art ranges from painting to theater production, highlighting racial dynamics and human experiences. He is the director of a nonprofit for arts, Kevo Arts Studios, and teaches at a college with over 10 years of experience as the owner of a successful tattoo studio. Additionally, he has a background in stage plays and filmmaking and has written and published several books. His story was even featured on Fox 26 News in a segment called From Inmate to Entrepreneurship, highlighting the journey from incarceration to business artistry. Kevo was proclaimed his own day from the mayor of Houston, Kevo Day, which is April 6, y'all, where he is honored for his value to the Houston community. So without further ado, I want to welcome him to the platform. Welcome and thank you so much for being here today. Thank you so much for having me. My pleasure. And I always like to connect my audiences to the guests. So we could either do a rapid fire 10 question game, emphasis on rapid, or an icebreaker. What are you in the mood for? Um, I like uh, rapid is fine. <laughs> Okie dokie, y'all. Here we go. We're playing rapid fire with Kevin and Genesis. Do 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 do. Question numero uno What is one word to describe you? artistic question number two (laughs) if you could have any superpower what would it be to be able to hold my breath for a very long time question three if you had the opportunity to trade places with someone for 24 to 72 hours would you trade places or remain yourself i would trade places with the president of the united states okay Question four, <laughs> what's, what's one thing you learned from incarceration? Um, oh, damn, wrap it. Uh, how to make jailhouse food. Okay, question five. What is one thing that you learned in childhood that has helped, helped you be the man you are today? Um, to be tough. Question six, favorite color. I like every color. (laughs) Question seven. Favorite Houston sports team? Wow. Um, The WNBA team, the Comets. Okay. Question nine. Would you rather a dream car or dream home? Or heck, let's go big and have both. A dream home. Okay. Question nine. You get three random acts of kindness per day. That's the minimum. What are your three for today? Um, I don't I don't understand the question. <laughs> so random acts of kindness is something random that you'll do for someone else. I do that every day. Okay, what are three that you would do? <laughs> um uh probably I probably would buy somebody's coffee um offer a hug to somebody that doesn't look like they're doing fine or um if I feel like somebody needs advice or um, a conversation sometimes people don't need advice they need a conversation I'll extend a phone call okay and question 10 days y'all so this is the rules so it's pass or play so if you pass our roles are reversed and you could ask me a question if you play I ask one last question to wrap up rapid fire so are we passing or playing i'm passing okay what is your question what's your favorite color blue (laughs) (laughs) so thank you for playing rapid fire audience i hope you learned a little bit more about kevin now we're going to talk about the work that he's doing now so with with you going from incarceration to entrepreneurship, there is a lot of learning on both sides of it. You learned when you were in, or some people say caged in, and then now you're caged out. And when I say caged out, sometimes we think that we're free 
fully, but there are limitations, whether they're mentally, physically, emotionally, or spiritually, that could still make us feel like we're caged in and we haven't really lived up to everything that we want to do. So let's start with a little bit insight into your background. So what kind of led you to incarceration? Well, that was so long ago. I'm, I'm 36 now. I was 17 or 18 when I went to jail. Mm-hmm. And I think that it's um a, a, a target point for people to, to talk about me is because it's such a odd mix of what I do now. I think that mm-hmm. when people meet me, they're like, dang, you went to jail for that? Because the crime was so harsh. I was in jail for aggravated robbery, weapons charges, and assault. And People talk to me and they're like, you don't seem like that type of person because you're so smart and articulate. And and I'm like, still, you still can be violent. But what led me in was just being a product of my environment and just not understanding um, how serious that life could be for a young man and um, a combination of culture and influence, to be honest with you. Okay, and I'm glad you st- you stated that because there are young men and people in general, a lot of people that listen to this podcast, and I want to let people know the reason why I ask about backgrounds is because you should never judge a book by its cover, and your past does not depict where you can go future and forward thinking, but we have to realize that our past does help us mature, our past helps us grow, and etc. So it's those past circumstances sometimes that help us do some work internally for us to materialize that externally, where mm-hmm. we reflect we learn, we grow, and we also plant legacy seeds, meaning had I not gone through what I went through, I would not be where I am today because there's, even though it sucked, even though it hurt, there's things that I learned in the pain, but the pain birth purpose. And right now you're on your purpose journey, which is entrepreneurship. You're doing a lot of things to give back to the community. So how would you say going from that to like your transition period to where you are now has helped you really make an impact in community and society? I think that um, how you said that people watch this and are young people who watch it, I think that I've become an inspiration um, without knowing it. And, I, and it, it took a while for me to realize that. I used to hear rappers say that rappers used to be like, I'm not your role model. And they don't realize that people identify with them in a way that they feel like they can relate to them. So they become a role model to them. But on my on my end, it's not that people identify with me, they identify with my past. So I, 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 I became a huge inspiration for people. So in terms of giving back, like people support what I stand for and also support what I, where I came from, from a lot, like, especially here in Houston. So that was always my way of giving back. I always been able to extend myself somehow, be involved in somebody's stuff for free. Cause I do a lot of events here. So what are some of the things that you do stand for, um, Kevo, for those who may not be aware? My my number one thing that I stand for is integrity. Um, I think that uh, if you're going to be involved with somebody uh, in any type of relationship, whether it be financially or a business relationship or personal, um, with me being a tattoo artist for so long, I've realized that, you know, you, young people like tattoos, you know, so my audience has always stayed young. So that's come with a responsibility from their parents that they should be able to trust me around them, you know? So for example, um, whenever, especially girls, whenever younger girls come and get, have always got tattoos by me and I know their parents, I just, I let them know on a personal level, like, you know, there's a line of respect here that I wouldn't even cross because of your parents, you know what I'm saying? And that since I have integrity, certain things (laughs) can happen here It's not that I'm going to tell your parents about what you're doing, but if anything ever happens here, you know, you'll know you're you're in good hands. So that's my number one thing is just having character, having good integrity, because people need people they can trust. Yeah, I think integrity is very important. That's one of the pillars that we believe in my nine to five is, you know, we have a lot of values that, you know, we we beat into our physicians, we beat into those other 
other folks. And I think integrity is what, what you do on the scene and what you do behind closed doors. Because if you're doing something differently that you wouldn't do in the naked or human eye, can you really say that you have integrity? And um, I think that speaks volume, how you carry yourself on or off the field. And another thing that you mentioned is, you know, some of the work that you're doing. So would you say that your artistry speaks for itself? Is that how you express yourself? And was that your saving grace? Yeah, as I got older, I realized that art is the is the only way I express myself. I'm not very, I'm not very um, friendly in terms of in terms of a stranger, you know. But I, I'm very open in terms of if I'm going to this place. Let's say I go to a football game. I know we have a common interest in football. I, I'll talk to a stranger about football. But if I just go out and I start networking, or I go to a club or a bar. I'm not really friendly. I, I've, I've noticed that about myself. My form of expression has always been art. And it took me a while to realize that. So let's dial into there because you said you're not always friendly when you go out. But what about if you go out and if you just, you know, give them a smile or just have a kosher conversation, you never know how your background, your personality and what you're doing now could be the saving grace or the conduit to help somebody else just by something small, even though art is your way of expression, expressing yourself, there may, there may be a reason why you were at that place at that certain yeah, time. So it's interesting when you asked me about the random acts of kindness, I was thinking like, I do that all the time. I'll do that and not really speak like outside outside of a conversation I really won't speak to the person I'll just be like you're welcome bye like I'll buy somebody's coffee and say yeah thank you you're welcome and then just that's it so those things that kind of just happen and you kind of right place right time I, <laughs> I haven't <laughs> really noticed them because it's my random act is really a random act mm -hmm. so um it's it's I don't know. I don't want to like make it look like I'm just socially awkward, but when you use the word expression, you know, that's how I define art as an as a expression of creativity. So I immediately thought like that's literally how I express myself. That's how I express my feelings, what I'm going through, um, what I want to deliver, what what I feel strongly about, what I feel deeply about um, and my opinions. I express them through art. Okay, that's that's fair enough. And when I see art, especially coming from the background that I was in for a while, because I studied psychology for a little bit and under the College of Liberal Arts, and I think art could be expressed in many ways. It could be spoken art. It could be written mm -hmm. art. It could be creativity, whether it's murals, paintings, you know, tagging, whatever the case may be. Though there's arts in multi multi fashion and multi forms and it could be very multi-dimensional and I feel like sometimes in today's society I feel like we can very much be surface level people and when I say surface level people I'm guilty of that too because sometimes I have a wall up and I'm like I don't need you in my business because we don't roll like that I'm going to share with you what I want to share with you but as far as what's going on in my home what's going on in my family my marriage or whatnot I'm going to keep that close to me because because you're not within my tight circle, like my thought, my A ones from day ones or my five fingers. But then mm -hmm. I realized that sometimes a stranger could be our best friend. Because if we think about it, all of our best friends were once strangers, but we had some type of linkage where we opened up with them. And I, I see that in entrepreneurship, especially with running this podcast and it making making the ranks that it has. If I never put myself out there and I kept closed off whenever I was going through a dark season in my life of losing my dad, I wouldn't be where I am right now with this podcast. He's the conduit behind it. And when I lost him, my world crumbled and it's going on three years um, since I lost him. But now what keeps me going is building that legacy now that I'm a mom and I'm a first time mom. And then what also gets me going is the fact that we just lost our second baby too. So it's just like, okay, the pain to the purpose. And that's why I asked you that, because I think a lot of people could relate to, you know, art, in various forms. And sometimes we may not necessarily speak the language, but something so soft and subtle that doesn't mean much to us can mean the world to somebody else. 
Yeah, it, it tends to happen like that. Um, if it wasn't for the bad, you wouldn't be able to enjoy the good things in life. So um, now that you're on this entrepreneurship, what are some of the things that you have learned from your journey that you could share with the audience if they're interested in transitioning from maybe corporate America or, you know, that hustle and bustle to doing something <laughs> of their own? Yeah, well, if they're an artist, then, um, you know, you just have to create because, I found myself around so many artists and I, and I saw something, I noticed something that didn't change. Right. I, I went to, for example, I went to a, a art school before. And at this art school, there were mostly retired people or people that were older than me. I, I went to university of Houston to get my bachelor's and I was art studio the whole time. I stayed in the art program. When I got my master's art program, when I was in Germany, I went to an art residency. And the one common denominator was like, when you're the artist, they they have to create. Um, if they don't, it's it's almost like a mental, it's almost like for the sake of their mental health, um, that if they're not creating, they're not wholesome, they're not positive, they're not, they don't feel purposeful, they don't feel, they don't feel fulfilled. And um, I think that um in terms of giving advice to entrepreneurs, I would not be, uh, I don't wanna say I'm the wrong person for that. It's because I'm not sure what would sustain that person. Some people are sustained by different things, but in terms of artists, I know that most artists are sustain, feel sustained by creating. So I would definitely say if you're an artist entrepreneur, don't put the other stuff first. You know, you really wanna make sure you put the art first because that's what's really gonna matter to you when a year has passed from whatever accomplishment you got is that okay. you're really going to be happy with what you did. Okay. And you didn't even realize you answered so much more in that question than you realized. I'm going to break it down for you. Cause you said, if you're an artist, I really don't know about other entrepreneurs, but one of the thing is with entrepreneurship, you have to do what sustains you. What makes you feel good? Where is your SME? Your, which is your subject matter expertise. How can you take your SME and monetize it what were you called for what were you born for what is your purpose and how is it rooted in your dna because nobody else can do what genesis does nobody mm -hmm. else can do what kevo does because there's only one kevo only there's one only you, yeah. one <laughs> yeah. you and i think that that is a part of entrepreneurship because when you know what your zone of genius is when you know what is yours then that's where you could use that as a springboard to catapult you to the next level of course yes you need to know you know finances you need to know um does it make sense to scale up does it make yeah. sense to outsource does it make sense you know to do a brick and mortar do you want to be online do you want to be brick and mortar you need to have all those things but once you get to the point where it's time for you to expand then there are other SMEs that you could collaborate and partner with that will help you drive your vision further but if you keep having this vision in your mind and you don't take the vision out of your mind put it on paper and materialize it then you're going to remain stagnant and you're not going to really function as an entrepreneurship and as an entrepreneur in the entrepreneurship realm and I think that's important to think about not just if you're an artist a creative you know a singer a dancer or whatnot because artists can have art studios, you could teach art, you could sell art, there's so many things that you could do in art, and I want to make sure we're doing justice to the audience by sharing that, because there's so many people that have amazing things that they could do, and they have these side hustles, but what happens whenever your side hustle is now replacing your full time? Is yeah. it time for you to really make that transition in order to make transformation? Yeah, it is. It is, it is where the, where the age to where um, that people have made more money than ever, in my opinion, doing something that they love to do. Um, whereas in the past, it seems like the data suggests that people were not happy with what they were doing. They just were doing it for money. So it kind of goes hand in hand, but I get what you're saying. Yeah, perfect. So I just wanted to elaborate on that because I was like, he said the thing, but didn't even elaborate on the thing. <laughs> so um, 
Keva, I want to go a little bit deeper here because I know that, you know, business art, business artistry and what you're doing right now, you have like the tattoo, the tattoos art studio, but you also do other things in the community. So what type of things are you doing within the Houston community where you're um, bringing that camaraderie in? Well, every time I um, have, let's go back a year ago. I did these um, art workshops um, for kids and adults and stuff. And what I was doing was teaching them the foundation of art. That way it will help them with their reading comprehension because the foundation level of art helps you comprehend better. It helps you focus on something for a long time. Um, and that was basically uh, free. I've, um, done a lot of different turkey drives and stuff. I do free tattoo events. Um, every time I have a production, I give away free shirts. Like, right, this is one of the shirts for one of my plays. Oh, you guys, send me a shirt. Shoot. <laughs> you could, you, we could collaborate with my book, Chocolate Drop in Corporate America. Hey. <laughs> I got a, yeah, I have some shirts for Vincent for my next stage play. The next big stage play I'm doing is uh, Vincent. It's about Vincent Van Gogh. So mm -hmm. right now my focus um for the remainder of the year is honestly the Vincent Van Gogh play. So outside of that, um, in terms of doing anything as of recently, it's I'm locked in inside the stage play. But in the past I've done I've done a lot I've done a lot of things. Okay. So uh this Vincent Van Gogh stage play that you're working on, yeah. um, have you went to some of the high schools or the community colleges or university to get cast members or tell us a little bit more about that? So so what I did was I casted some of the people that were in my last play and I held auditions to fill the cast with different people. And when I filled the when I held the auditions, I didn't like um the with the turnout. So I went online to cast people through there. Um, it's been, um, it's always tough. Nothing is just smooth sailing. But the thing about it is that I can already see the play. I, I already saw it. It's already done. Like in my head, it's, I've already done it. So I just have to do it in real life. <laughs> so so <clears throat> I've casted it. I wrote, I wrote it. I wrote the song. I, it's fully casted now. I have all the talent that I need. Um, it's a performance art special. So the thing about art is when you get into theater, you have uh, most theater is drama. It's the format and it's one act, two act, three acts. But there's another element of theater that people ignore on a small scale because it takes large scale money. And that element is what we call performance art. So, for example, most musicals and most dances, like Nutcracker, would be performance art. So the thing I did was with Vincent, I said, I don't want to make it a typical one-act play. Let me make it a performance art. That way I can introduce all elements of art that I can to express how I feel about Vincent Van Gogh. And how I feel about him is that he's one of the greatest artists ever. So how can I express this? Well, one, it has to be educational. And two, since it's a stage play, there has to be an element of drama. So in order to make it educational, what I did was I made the play set up like as if you were going to a museum to learn about Vincent Van Gogh. And in terms of the performance art, what I did is the story is told through a poet, a singer, a musician, and actors. But while the actors are acting out this museum scene, because they're, they're at a museum on the play, while they're acting, I'm painting Van Gogh's most famous artwork, which is Starry Night, the entire time. So I think, like I said, in my head, it's already done, <laughs> but I just really think it's a remarkable idea and I can't wait for the world the rest of the world to see it, even though I've seen it already in my head. Okay, and thank, thanks for sharing that and elaborating so we could kind of get the vision that you have. And yeah. I see some artwork behind you. Is that something that yeah. you have done? <laughs> yeah, that's the print. That's not the actual uh, original. That's just a copy. So when somebody wants my art, 
they can order prints or they can order on a shirt. Like I have merchandise here. I have mugs. Um, do I have time to grab this? <laughs> I have different stuff. I was going to show you, but it's not good. If it was closer, I would have just grabbed it. But okay. yeah, I have mugs, shirts, rolling trays, tote bags. I have so much different merchandise on my website based on my artwork. And then the other question that I want to ask uh, before I throw you an audible here is I know in the Houston area, there are some um, Title I schools, so the schools that don't have a lot of money backing them. And, you know, there's the BIPOC community where there's not a lot of resources for those in those individuals and they do want to study art. They do want to do other things. Have you partnered in those spaces like kind of as a community event or nonprofit to just kind of be the saving grace for those youths where they to the out to the outside world they may be wayward you know, they may be lost or heading towards incarceration you know i've 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 tried with with, with some and um i hope this conversation makes others reach out to me but i have tried to partner with different um people and and, and i've run into the issue is that they don't actually know who I am, even though I'm in Houston, even though I may be popular in Houston. And I've been actually shut down a lot from access to stuff like that. So that's unfortunate. But um, like I said, this year I was really focused on stage play. So I really didn't, I can't speak for this year, but I know last year I, I did a lot. Um, and I, I got shut down more, more often than I would think I would. And it didn't discourage me or anything, but I'm definitely, um, looking forward to doing that more often in the future because that is one of the things that actually does sustain me like when I can especially the youth I'm not too good with adults but kids I, I really I have a lot of patience with kids I really they have so much time you know left that I can I, I can fight with them I can fight that battle of stubbornness with them because I'm like you got all day I got all day like, let's see who wins. And I usually win because <laughs> I'm right. trying to help them. You know what I mean? All right. And one thing I would say or, you know, challenge you is don't give up on the adults because there may be an adult that may be your age and they're still trying to figure it out and they may have went through incarceration or et cetera. And you never know how your story could speak to where they are our present day, even though mm -hmm. that um you feel like they're not like, you know, they're not on your, they're not on your level, or you feel like you have more time with the youth, I always say just have some saving grace and compassionate for those that where we often overlook. And, you know, I'm speaking for myself too, because sometimes I'm like, no ham, no cheese, no turkey. I'm not going to bother with that individual because I don't want, I don't want that stress. But sometimes it's those people that we need to reach out to that, you know, on the outside, they may look fine, but internally they're really crying out for help and all their hoping for is that someone would just talk to them someone would be a lending ear a shoulder a sounding board and so there's so many people out there that we can reach if we just get outside of what where we think that's not our purview but you know it never hurts to try and I just want to put that challenge out there for you but also you know myself because iron sharpens iron and then now I'm going to throw you an audible before we jump to the CTA. So is there something that I have not asked you around the topic today that you want to share with the audience? Um, no, I can't think of anything, um, honestly. Um, I appreciate you. I really appreciate you. Because I, I try to really be engaged with whoever I'm talking to and not stray. And I wanted to answer anything you had because because I feel like that's what makes the connections good is that you know, you are who you are and I am who I am. So let me focus on what me and you can do together. <laughs> but I, I, I didn't I didn't come in. I don't come in thinking like this is what I want to talk about. So it's all good. OK, perfect. Um, mm -hmm. So now let's jump into the CTA, because I always like to leave a challenge for the audience, too, because what good is hearing stories, hearing tips, tricks, and tools if you're not going to take what you have heard and apply it. So what would your call to action be for the amazing gemmers out there? To support people who have good character and integrity. And um and I know you wouldn't know that off offhand off or just how could you really know that? But there's enough data out here usually to research people and get an idea of what people are talking about and what they believe. 
And the reason why I say that you want to support those type of people is because as time goes on, like as life goes on, eventually very shitty people end up in power because people keep enabling them. And if you don't, it, it may be funny or cool at first, but if you don't nip that out the way, you get left with something you're unhappy with for your own future. And um, I'm not trying to sound too political here, but it happens a lot. And um, it happens a lot in presidencies uh, to where people vote or don't vote um, based on whatever they wanted to. And then they find out that, oh, this person is really not who I thought they were, or this not who I thought they were. This person has always been like this and I should not have did this. And I really take that serious that people should start looking up who people truly are before they um, start supporting them. Okay, so so let's put let's put that to the test. What did you find out about me before you reached out to Jen, <laughs> to the podcast? <laughs> I actually listened to this one podcast. I think it was you interviewed somebody named Terry. I just listened to the whole show, and um, I, so I didn't like look you up to be honest with you. I just I just interviewed and I just thought that um, all right. So I was I would think that this person is genuine is what what I kind of got the vibe I got so it wasn't like um I, I didn't I didn't listen to it and, and come up with uh I wasn't looking for like oh man does this person sound like a good person you sounded like a genuine cool person so you, you didn't give me that I didn't judge a character as if this that you're full of it like so it was cool <laughs> Okay, cool. I believe so, yeah. that was somebody named. Did you interview somebody named Terry? I did. I have... okay, okay, because I can't remember. Like, I just know their name was Terry. Uh, it's spelled T E R I I. Yeah, I have so many episodes in the books now. It's like seven sixty eight. But yeah, uh, Terry was was super dope, super cool. Like, I interview like a lot of amazing people, and they all like they're all so unique. And it's like, man, thirty minutes flies by so fast. And I'm like, yeah. dang, there's so much more that I want to ask. But you know, yeah. thirty minutes, I'm like, I want to be like Rachel Ray. You can eat a meal in thirty minutes. You can listen to Genesis in thirty minutes. Bada bing, bada boom. <laughs> so I love that you um, did your due diligence and you actually took the time to listen. One of the things that I want to really put out there for the audience is how they could connect with you and learn more about the work that you're doing. So what is your website and what's the best way they can reach you? Artbykevo.com. A-R-T-B-Y-K-E-V-O. And if you're on Instagram, it's Kevo Arts, K-E-V-O-A-R-T-S. And I appreciate all of you for listening. And I hope that this episode finds the right person. Yes, amazing. And you um, are so loved, y'all. I want to tell you that from my heart to your ears. And I want to encourage you to keep being you. Because if you aren't living, then you're merely existing. It's time for you to get out of your shell. It's time for you to go through your own metamorphosis and really fly and bloom because the world needs you to be you. There's no one else that could do it like you. So it's time for you to do the damn thing. Thing and stop playing it safe. And my challenge for you is that you listen to this segment and learn that your past does not depict where you are going future. Mm -hmm. Your future is so much brighter than your past. And if you think about it from a car analogy, the windshield is always bigger than the rear view mirror because what's out in front of you is so much bigger and brighter than what's behind you. So my challenge for you is to share this segment with somebody else, whether it's a family member, a friend, or someone that you know that needs some inspiration and some motivation. And make sure you subscribe to the podcast. We're on 40 plus audio platforms and the video is on YouTube. All you gotta do is type the name of the show, Gems with Genesis Amaris Kemp, and support us and leave a review. Digital currency is king, y'all. Let me know what you like, what you don't like, because feedback is a gift. And my big ask is for brand sponsors because it does take monetary resources to fuel the mission and the movement. So signing out, Genesis Amaris Kemp and Kevin Arigbe. Peace, y'all. Right.